the scoring summary after 40 minutes of play here in Portland with the Portland Winterhawks. Two goals by Cam Neely in front of the Oshawa Generals, 5-2. to two. Portland, the first American-based team to host the Memorial Cup, and the Winterhawks are 20 minutes away from becoming the first U.S.-based team to win the Memorial Cup. They lead 5-2, to two and Oshawa starts the third period with a power play opportunity as Playfair still has eight seconds remaining in his penalty. The third period is underway. Sasser going after the puck. Bumped there and trying to get it in is Nicholson in behind the net. The penalty now has expired. Portland back at full strength. The puck cleared right in front of the net. Here's a chance. Sorella's shot. Rebound in front. They slap away. And covering up goaltender Vernon. Then it's knocked away from him. Slides in front and brought out by Playfair. Here's Playfair. Long shot. And that's wide off the target. Sorella slapped it off the board. Gives it to Gans. Up on the right side goes John Hutchings. He shoots it in to the Portland zone. It's cleared out to the center ice area. Sorella gives it to John Hutchings. He clears it off the board, right back into the winter hawk zone. Sorella backhands it there, in behind the net. Pinned against the boards. Kelly Hubbard has his man all tied up. Here's Sorella, shot. That's kicked out by Vernon. And the winter hawks, Turcott, cleared it to his own blue line to Sasser. Heath going after it with Crumb. And it's shot down the ice into the Oshawa zone with Joe Sorella, number 26. Oshawa trailing by three. There's a drive off the stick of Dan Grattan deflected up over the glass and out of play. Well, you know, a year ago, Danny Grattan was playing in the Tier 2 championship as his growth. Here he is in the Memorial Cup. Great future for this kid. Too young for the draft. He just turned 16. And uh, great future in front of him. He's not the worst, there's a lot by far out there. Great young amateur hockey players, and you know we had dinner last night uh, with the Cooper Molson nominees, three outstanding athletes, and that Pat LaFontaine, what a future he has, and what a personable youngster, and uh, I really enjoyed meeting Pat LaFontaine and Verdun. I was impressed, they were all three gentlemen. There comes Jaremchuk in with Portland, dumps it in front, Neely backhand shot, and that goes wide. Slapped around the boards, after it goes Randy Heath trying to get it, Turcott and Jaremchuk, Jaremchuk squeezed off the play, and spinning around is Don Biggs, gets a pass up on the right side, Smith shot, and Vernon stops at it, rolls right back to Vernon, and he covers up. And the gray was given a rough time right in front of the net. Here we go, there is Go Winter Hawks. Hi, Murray. Winnell, British Columbia, the home of the Gassocks. Well, yeah, we know all about the Gassocks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were up there for uh, with an old-timers game this past winter. They treated us very well. As have the people in Portland. We've had a wonderful stay here. There to be congratulated. What a job they've done here in the Portland area hosting the Memorial Cup. The folks at Molson's and Cooper, boy, they've just made this uh, outstanding event. The Memorial Cup Championship and the Portland Winterhawks are leading the Oshawa Generals 5-2. to two, And we have played three minutes here in the third period. A long shot by Hutchings. That's off the target. And it's left at the side of the net for Brian Curran. He lifts it out to the center ice area. It's trapped there by John Hutchings. Drops it back. Sorella, long shot. That's off the net. Trying to get the loose puck is Dean DeFazio. He's checked. There's a break now on the right side. Walker coming in. Cleared it in front. Ferrero scores. There's Ray Ferrero, and it's 6-2. Well, that's what happens when you have to take chances. They get caught there. And, of course, Ferrero, he's a natural goal scorer, and he made no mistake when he got in there. Here's coming up here now. No mistakes. And once again, he gives a little deep to the backhander and comes over with the forehander. They must be wise to something out there because they, they're they going more and more to that forehander when they get in that clear breakaway. Beautiful goal. Makes it 6-2. to two. Good play by Gordon Walker. He looked up and he spotted Ray Ferrero. And Ferrero from Trail, British Columbia. A fifth-round 
first draft pick of Hartford Whalers. Last season makes it 6-2. to two. Oshawa coming back in, Smith, and it's called on an offside play at the Portland line. The Memorial Cup steeped in tradition. We mentioned the last time Oshawa won it was 1944. But over the years, you know, you look at that Memorial Cup, some great teams. The 1952 Guelph Biltmore's coached by Al Fike. 1961 St. Mike's Majors, Gary Cheevers was on that team. Back in 57, the Flint Blonde Bombers won it. George Wood, who was a Vancouver Canucks scout, was the goaltender that year. Very prestigious junior hockey trophy, the Memorial Cup, and Portland leading this game 6-2. to two. Gans got to the line where he was stopped. Carlsworth drops it back into his own zone to Norm Smith. Ferrero from Walker and Brandolini at 2.37 of this third period. Buck is knocked down by Crom. He can't get a shot away as he was covered. Norm Smith, who is from Sault Ste. Marie, gets the puck to the center ice area. That was broken up, and it's brought back by Cam Neely. He shoots it in. Charles Wood, number 27. It's slapped off the boards into the Portland zone. And John Kordick after it there, number four. Kordick cleared it off the boards, and the Winter Hawks come racing out of their own zone again. This is Yurencha. He's grabbed by Norm Smith. Rolls in front, and goaltender Peter Sidorkowitz taking no chances and smothers the puck. Who's sitting there on the doorstep? 82 goals this year. Randy Heath. Boy, that, that two have really been potent. Well, that, the whole three of them have been potent. Listen to the crowd. Standing ovation. The Winter Hawks leading 6-2. to two. Their capacity crowd of more than 10,000 here in Portland for the championship game. Back to the ice there was Dan Gratton, number 77. Cleared off the board. Close puck in front. The Winter Hawks get it again. Opportunity for Heath. Goes wide and it comes out to center ice where Brian Curran has it. His third year with Portland. Curran back quickly to get that loose puck, gives it to John Cordick. Cordick ahead over the line goes Heath the shot over the top of the net. He got the drive away and he was down on his knees. He has the puck again up to Uremchuk, but this time it's intercepted by Joe Sorella. Sorella, number 26. Now it's cleared into the Portland zone again. As we approach the five-minute mark here in the third period, Yuremchuk had trouble with that pass. It's broken up by Todd Charlesworth, and he shoots it into the Portland zone. And it's whistled down. So Portland leading Oshawa 6-2. to two. This is Memorial Cup action on CTV. Olympic stain. We've got the inside on outside protection. Inside every can of Olympic stain is linseed oil that penetrates inside wood to give strong protection outside. Olympic stain. We've got the inside on outside protection. Now, buy three, get four. Available at Reliable Flooring and Paints, UCO Farm and Home Center, Gossy Tile and Building Center Limited. Welcome back to Portland. This is Bernie Pascal with Red Story and Alec Robertson with the Winterhawks in this Memorial Cup championship leading 6-2. to two. Oshawa with possession now in their own zone. They've got to get back here with a goal or two in the early going of the third period, but that play is nullified by an offside pass. Well, they can say what they like, that Portland were going to play it uh, just as the same as they did the first 40 minutes, but they're really not doing that, Bernie. They're playing three men back all the time now. they got two defensemen and one forward trailing. They're not taking any chances of breakaways. Not that Oshawa have been getting that many anyway, but uh, they're really covering up and they're playing smart hockey. Incidentally, I might add that uh, I'm uh, all alone as one of the Story family up here today, but Bernie's not all alone because we have son Brad doing the statistics up here with us doing a great job and we have other number one son Brian over there in the penalty box doing his little job so the, the Pasco family has taken over the broadcast <laughs> bullying was a paid political message <laughs> okay red the Portland Winterhawks leading 
Six to two here. And back after the puck goes number three. That's Kelly Hubbard. In the Portland zone, it's knocked down. Here's a chance for Jeff Steffen. Steffen gets it back. Hutchings setting up. Cleared into the corner by Sorella. Backhand shot. Loose puck. Steffen fires away. And it hit a skate and goes wide. Scott Bridges trying to get to it. It's kept in. There's a shot. An elbowing penalty coming up. And I believe it'll be to Sorella. Elbowing penalty against Oshawa, at least. Perhaps Scott Bridges. And that's who's going off. Number 11, Scott Bridges of the Oshawa Generals. Well, that's what's helped to kill them. I wouldn't say it's uh, totally responsible. It certainly doesn't help because it gives the Portland team, who are a faster team, that much more advantage. But I think even even Steven, uh, they outskate them. Oh, hi. <laughs> There's Brian over there in the penalty box. And the public address announcer and all the other officials. Well, I'm, I was referring to the Pasco family. I mean, uh, <laughs> after all, <laughs> I'm sit, I'm outnumbered up here two to one. Do you think I'm going to give anybody else a break? <laughs> no, a penalty there to Oshawa. Scott Bridges in the penalty box. He has 148 remaining in that minor penalty. And the Portland Winterhawk, their power play, well, they employ a power play, which is, I think you'd agree. Well, here's a chance. Jerem Chuck's shot, another drive, they score! That's Heath. Randy Heath yeah, was trailing he, on the play. Yeah, he followed in, right, go, he went right for the till and the puck was there. And once again, that's that one line that does it. Jerem Chuck uh, carrying the puck in, and there was a jam up in there. Jerem Chuck gets it in front. Heath doesn't leave the area. He tucks it in behind before he's taken out. I was just in the process of saying, Red, that here it is, your Chuck, and look at Heath, moves in and gets the loose puck. But what I was going to say is they employ a power play, which really is as close to clockwork precision as junior hockey can get. And before I could say it, they had another power play goal. Every time they get a, an advantage, whether it's a, a breakaway or a power play, they get a dangerous scoring opportunity or else they score. Oh, it's now 7-2 to two for Portland. And they're starting to run away with it. And the goal scored by Randy Heath. Now it's cleared out to center. Nicholson tried to trap it there. It should be icing. Hubbard gets to it. Icing is called against the Oshawa Generals. Well, they can, they can smell those rings, and they can smell pay dirt. This crowd is behind them, and I don't think there's any stop in this club now. It's just a matter of how many do they win by. They played well from the start of the game, and uh, they deserve to be out in front 7-2. to They're the better team. Well, as Coach Ken Hodge was telling us, that his players are very creative. He said if that's the strong point about our team, and they've certainly been very creative this afternoon. He also said, I don't want to play in my end. <laughs> we're, not, we're not as strong in our own end as we'd like to be. We're strictly an offensive team, and they've proven that today. The Panasonic winner today, a Panasonic Color Television to the Memorial Cup Most Valuable Player. A presentation by Panasonic, and there'll be some lucky player receiving that award at the conclusion of today's game. Seven minutes have gone here in the third period. It's seven to two for Portland. Oshawa pulling out all the stops now as they desperately try to get back into it. But this Portland Winterhawk team has simply been outstanding in this championship game today. They have possession again. Play fair, number 19. Slapped it off the boards. Out of reach for Kurt Brandolini. And it's brought out now by Charlesworth. He shoots it into the Portland zone. The Winterhawks right on top of Oshawa at every opportunity. And are they a good skating team? Here's a chance. Hutchings lets it go. Off goaltender turn and another penalty coming up. And I little action in front of the net. And it will be a penalty to Portland. Nice sticking penalty. Give Oshawa another chance to get into the game, or at least save face a little bit, because I think with a five-goal advantage and the fact that uh, they're playing that well, it's going to be very difficult for Oshawa to get back in the game. They better not lose their head. There's Gans saying that he somebody took a slash at him. Well, sorry, go ahead, Marie. Just going to say the Oshawa player McLean heads to the penalty box as well. Double penalty. Oh, well, 
McLean of Oshawa and Jim Playfair of Portland in the penalty box. A beautiful Panasonic color television to the Memorial Cup most valuable player. That's going to be a difficult choice today. It really will be. The three stars of the game, of course, receive the Brute Men's gift set and the sports bag, compliments of Fabergé. Plus, they have the Molson Cooper gold, silver, and bronze three-star medallions, and they're really coveted honors by the junior hockey players here at the Memorial Cup. John Winter, Brian Dickey, Brent Imlock, and the good folks of Molson's, Cliff Gable and his staff from Cooper, have all been very supportive of this Memorial Cup competition. 12-15 left to play in period number three. Portland in front of Oshawa, 7-2. Mark is taken here by Brian Curran. Curran, who's a native of Toronto. He was born in Toronto. Lives in Alberta now in the offseason. That puck fired up over the boards. And the fan has a souvenir. With Portland leading by five goals, this is Memorial Cup action on CTV. There is a special moment when technology and emotion come together to create something that is truly new and exciting. Topaz. Clean, taut, aerodynamic. A high swirl engine for more power and greater output the instant you touch the accelerator. Topaz. Front wheel drive, four wheel fully independent suspension, and open road technology. 1984 Mercury Topaz, two and four door sports sedan. Dynamic even while standing still. Topaz, accelerating the future. Now. Welcome back to Portland. A rainy Saturday afternoon. Might dampen the spirits outside the building, but the enthusiasm inside is really something today with the home team Winterhawks leading by a score of 7-2. to two. And there was a penalty on that last whistle as the Portland Winterhawks were penalized. There's a chance in front. They score. score. What an That's opportunity Huey. there, Todd Huey. Well, that gets them back in there a little bit. As I said, saves a little pace. Give them a little momentum. But I don't think it's going to be enough. They're going to have to come out a lot stronger than that. And uh, I don't think Portland are going to give them too many men. Here it comes up here now. That scan's coming in on the outside. And Bowie tucking it home. Nice setup. Nice goal. But it's a little too late. Well, Walker was in the penalty box for Portland. A power play goal for Todd Huey. And it's 7-3. Good hit there in the Portland corner. Curran gets the puck ahead. Ray Ferreira up over the Oshawa line, being chased by Dean DeFazio. There's a chance Norm Schmidt trying to get it out. Ferreira intercepts, coming right in front. Tucks it at the side, and that's stopped by goaltender Sidorkowicz. Good move by Ray Ferrero moving around behind the net, trying to jam it on that side. He's quick. And as I say, he battled back twice from Mono once and a broken wrist another time. He's coming back strong, and he's going to wind up on a Memorial Cup championship, it looks like, from here. In a well-played game by both teams with Portland just having a slight edge, and I'd say mainly on speed and puck possession. They don't throw that puck away. They make nice plays. Yaremchuk and Heath, uh, I would say it's going to have to be a choice between the two of them who's been the outstanding man in this game. As we had a look at the Oshawa coach, Paul Terrio, his assistant coaches are Ian Young and Dan Farrell. And when you talk to him about the coaching, he says you've got to give them credit, too. Ian Young is the goaltending coach. Buck rolled into the Portland zone. And the Winter Hawks, every opportunity, they just get control of that puck and maintain control. And they have it right again. Yuremchuk brings it on the right side. Yuremchuk, he's knocked off the puck there by Joe Sorella. And Yuremchuk takes a swing at the Oshawa player. The puck comes to Heath. Circling around, here's Heath getting set, moving in front, still has it. He drops it back, an opportunity now for Brad Duggan. Over to the other side, here's Heath in front, trying to get it to Yaremchuk, and Sorella had him tied up. 
22 left to play in the third period as Charlesworth brings it out for Oshawa. Charlesworth shoots it into the Portland corner. Kelly Hubbard goes after it there. He takes a heavy check against the board. Goes loose to McLean. Dropped it in front. Schmidt gets that a shot. And that was just off. Gets it back again. A drive. And that missed by several feet. Kept in at the line by John Hutchins. Chasing after the puck is Kelly Hubbard. Bumped against the board, sir, by John McLean. And we get a whistle. And the players now are changing about every 30 seconds, especially the Portland team. So they're coming out there pretty fresh, and they're able to outskate and out hustle Oshawa, who desperately need a couple more goals to get back in this game. Memorial Cup Championship, Oshawa Generals and the Portland Winterhawks. Quite an incentive bonus for the Winterhawks if they win the Memorial Cup. The players all get a trip to the Bahamas. Expenses paid. Not bad, Red. Not bad. <laughs> and we were also told if they didn't win, <laughs> they'd be on their bicycles heading home in two days. <laughs> they lead this game 7-3. to three. The puck cleared out to the center ice area. Knocked down there, and it's brought in by Alfie Turcott. Turcott lined up by Norm Schmidt. Spins around, goes after the puck again. And it was knocked away and gloved. And whistled down by the referee, Jerry Pateman. Who has done a good job officiating this game. Under contract to the NHL. There's the score. And a reminder, this is Memorial Cup action on CTV. You want a defense. Great engine defense. So we made our motor oil better. SO Uniflow, our best motor oil. SO Uniflow gives better defense against heat, against corrosion, against engine wear. You wanted better defense, so we made a better motor oil. SO Uniflow. You make us better. SO. I had it all marked. Welcome back to Portland, 924 remaining. And of course, we'll have the Panasonic play of the game, and that's going to be a big decision to pick the Panasonic play of the game of this Memorial Cup competition. There have been 10 goals so far, and a handful of them of a spectacular variety. We'll get Red Story involved here with the rest of the crew to pick that Panasonic play of the game. You mean the rest of the Pasco family? <laughs> <laughs> Producer Ed Marcel in the truck. Tyless, because I'm wearing his. Burgess of Oshawa, one of his infrequent appearances out there, number five. He's from Sudbury. Number five, Tim Burgess on defense now for Oshawa. He clears it in and it's brought out again by the Winterhawks. This is Ferrero trying to get it in front for Brandolini. He's checked. Brandolini still digging after it. But Greg Gravel clears it out to the center ice area. Shot down the ice by Dean Tavazio. And Brian Walker chases it there. Walker for the Winterhawks. Bumped against the boards by Todd Huey, who scored the last Oshawa goal. Now it's tied up in the corner there, and we get a whistle. Well, the Oshawa players, I think, feel that the game is out of the bag. I hope they don't lose their heads. They haven't been disgraced on the ice. And I like, wouldn't like to see them break out now and retaliate and start a little rhubarb. We don't need that. Although I can understand their frustrations at being out hustled, maybe out hit, out scored, out skated. They've certainly been the, uh, Portland have been the dominant team here today, right from the opening whistle. They, they, they took it to Oshawa and just never let them off the hook. Well, the earlier game in the Memorial Cup competition, Portland defeated Oshawa 10 to 5. We really didn't get a chance to see how good Mike Vernon was in the Nets because Oshawa haven't really tested him that much. He's had three goals scored on him again uh, today, but uh, to come up with big saves, we haven't really seen that many uh, chances for Oshawa. So how good he is, I really couldn't say. I do know one thing. He's the most valuable player in the Western Hockey League. He's also the number one all-star goalkeeper. Well, they've been having some problems with a pane of glass in the corner there, and they're finally getting that straightened around. 
And uh, we'll get that straightened out and be right back. And a reminder, this is Memorial Cup action on CTV. Why don't you just buy her some perfume? <laughs> That's not good enough. Well, you know what you could do? You could get her one of those little purses that sits on the hip and has the... Uh, oh, yeah, I've seen the purse. Hey, wait a nice. second. What about one of those big purses? Get on. Getting together. Keep on having your fun. Why don't you get her a dishwasher? She's already got one. Let's take a little while. Keep on. Drinking your ex cards. Keeps on. Keeps on. Keeps on tasting great. The final eight minutes and 28 seconds of this Memorial Cup championship, Portland and Oshawa. Back in the Portland zone, it's dropped back. Sorella takes a shot, gets the puck again, getting ready, lets it go, and that's blocked by the defense. And the Winterhawks come up with it again. Up on the left side, an opportunity for Heath. New Yaremchuk over the line. He's spun and taken out of the play, and there'll be a penalty coming up to Todd Charlesworth. He spun your M chuck around well, and tried to get by him. How else are you going to stop that guy? You put a lasso on him and you haul him in. You've really got to do something illegal to stop that fellow when he busts. Here's coming up here now. He gets a little piece of him around the hip there and just dumps him. I might add that uh, Portland may be winning the Memorial Cup this year, but don't think they're not going to be a threat next year again because there's approximately 15 to 16 of these players returning for next season and with this type of experience under their belt they're going to be awful rough in that western hockey league oh and the penalty go ahead no that's right red and uh, what a job brian shaw and ken hodge have done with this portland hockey team well one thing they were pointing out is the fact that i think both uh, managers and coaches uh, pointed out that anybody can draft number one and number two but it's the people that can go down and draft five, six, and seven and come up with something good that counts. And uh, I think that's a tribute to the coaching staffs of both these teams that they come up with uh, players because... Go ahead. Okay, Neely almost had an opportunity in front of the net there. He was checked. And uh, Oshawa has done an excellent job, too, in their recruiting. They've got a great hockey team. Going after the puck there was Brian Walker, and it's cleared into the Portland zone. Brad Duggan trying to get it out. Oshawa comes up with possession. Sorella is in the penalty box for the Oshawa Generals. What a collision there as Smith is knocked right against the boards in front of the Portland bench. Now he gets back to the action as Walker has it for the Winterhawks. Up to center ice, and it's intercepted by Norm Schmidt. He clears it off the boards, and the Winterhawks just steer it into the Oshawa zone. 110 left in the power play opportunity. 7-3 for Portland over Oshawa. And it's cleared into the Portland zone off the stick of Norm Schmidt. Brought out again by Brian Walker. Here come the Winterhawks. Walker up with Turcotte over the line. Good check. He's knocked off stride. Then Turcotte is dumped as he headed for the puck in front of the net. Kept in at the line by Crom. Into the corner. Walker trying to dig it loose there. He's checked. Comes back. Here's Crom moving right in front. Then it's knocked off his stick. 35 seconds left in the power play. Walker behind the net. He's checked by John Hutchings. Puck rolls loose. Ferrero trying to dig it loose. Here's Ferrero from the side. Ferrero drops it back to the line. Getting set now is Brad Duggan, his drive, and that's off the target. Ferrero, number 20, he lets his shot go. That hits a skate and rolls into the corner. Ten seconds left in the power play, and the puck is shot down the ice. Winterhawks in their own zone. Number six is Brad Duggan. Pass up the middle to Ferrero. Dug and let it go, and the Oshawa Generals are back at full strength. Sidorkowitz out of the net. Steers it there. Sorella trying to get a whistle. The puck's knocked away from him, and then he gets it back. Sorella, number 26 for Oshawa. Cleared it out to the center ice area, and it's cleared right back in by number 19. That's Jim Playfair, and it's whistled down. And everywhere you look, there's white sweaters. I, I have to check every now and again to make sure they only have five men out in front of their goaltender because they're they are really covering up while they're playing a defensive style of hockey, which uh, they don't really need to do, but uh, that's a good strategy to play that at this time of the, of the game. And Oshawa really aren't going anywhere. Well, the Portland Winterhawks have 13 of their players from British Columbia. 
They have four American-born players. And the Winterhawks, with a very appreciative crowd offering their support. And they're on their feet again. And they've been up and down so many times in this game. They're fantastic fans. They started before the game started. A penalty coming up now to Portland. A delayed penalty as Svorkowitz heads to the bench for the extra attacker. Five and a half minutes left to play in the third period. It's cleared ahead. Here's a chance now. Up over the line goes Nicholson. Trying to get a chance. It comes over to Burgess. Burgess dumps it into Gans. Another Gans penalty. behind the net, and Curran touches it. Another penalty And coming. the penalty coming up, of course, to the Portland Winterhawks. Orkowitz got on the bench there. He was there for a good 20 seconds. They couldn't really get a good scoring opportunity. Brian Curran, number five, six foot four, 205 pounds. Terry Jones is going to take a little rest over there. We want to see if uh, Turcotte comes back out. He got off the ice limping a little bit. He's coming up there right now. Well, that could have been another uh, penalty, but the, uh, uh, the original penalty was back in the Oshawa zone. That could have been one there as well. As Kordick did a little cross-stepping in front of the net. Now the puck, Sorella gets to it first ahead of Brandolini and gives it to Gans. Here comes Gans, number 88. I've been impressed with his play throughout the Memorial Cup championship. He dropped it there for Grattan, and now it's cleared back, and Sorella forced into his own zone for Oshawa. Oshawa captain straight up the middle now. Up over the line. He's in there with John McLean. And the puck is hooked away from him and it's cleared to center ice. Sorella, who's seen a lot of action out there defensively. Well, the Oshawa Generals clears it on the left side to John McLean. McLean in behind the net, but goaltender Vernon got to it. He slapped it into the corner. And they pin it there and get a whistle. And they're all getting a little tired. That's been a tough struggle out there for these kids. And they've been gone 55 minutes of a, at a pretty strenuous pace. And of course, when you play in an arena this small, there's no place to hide. You, there's no center ice area. The game is played in either one end or the other. When I say no center ice, you take a couple of strides and you're past it. Uh, so there's always action. And you're always getting belted and there's no room to hide. As I say, somebody's always got a piece of you. So as the game drags on, you drag down. And they're getting tired. Right from the draw, good play there by Greg Gravel, number seven. He won the faceoff and headed directly to the net, forcing Vernon to make the save. Gravel from Capitalist Casing, Ontario. And, of course, I think Leo Levine comes out from Capitalist Casing. And any town that uh, can put up with, Cap with uh, Leo Levine has to be a pretty <laughs> good town. He's a real character. You're listening, Leo. Hello from all the gang out here. We've seen many of your friends this week. There's a shot. Good save by goaltender Mike Vernon. Oshawa on the power play here looking for a goal it's set back to the line Schmidt kept it in had a little trouble with it there Schmidt goes after the puck again number four sends it over backhanded at the side Gravel has it Gravel with the gray rolled it in front and Todd Huey chases it there for the Oshawa General Huey and closely watched by Grant Sasser. And it's steered to the side, and Vernon covers up. Well, that Vernon is a stand-up goalkeeper. I've noticed he never gives away that top corner. A lot of the goalkeepers today, as soon as the fellow goes to take a shot, they're all already on their way down, and the top corners are wide open. Vernon doesn't do that, at least not today. I haven't seen him all year, but he's a, he's a stand-up goalkeeper, and if he retains that style, he's a surefire bet to be a star in the future. Portland Winterhawks, of course, have developed some outstanding players over the years, as the Oshawa Generals have done likewise. What a history, the Oshawa team. The most famous player, of course, there would be Bobby Orr. Now it's slapped down the ice with 15 seconds remaining in the Portland penalty to Terry Jones. Of course, the Dave and Wayne Babbage brothers played with the Portland Winterhawks, Terry Turnbull, Larry Playfair, Keith Brown, Gary Nyland uh, with Toronto Maple Leafs and many others. What a history of the Portland Winterhawks. There's a chance now. Puck comes in front. Vernon got a piece of that and deflects it into the corner. Both teams back at full strength. Race for the puck. 
Carlsworth, he slips and falls, so icing is waved off, and Siderkowitz forced to make a save. And I think we're going to have a penalty here to Gord Walker. Uh, he took the Oshawa player down pretty heavy in there. Called it high sticking. You know, you were talking about great Oshawa players. Billy Taylor, out of the past, I'll tell you, was one of the great ones. Well, as we mentioned, too, you get back to that last time they won the Memorial Cup, 1944, with Ezadecki and uh, Floyd Curry. Well, we've seen some pretty good hockey players around here this week. Uh, of course, Bobby Crom's here looking at his son. I had uh, breakfast with Johnny Bauer the other morning. Bob Berry's been here. Dan Maloney, Billy Taylor, who I just mentioned, Rudy Mige, Joe Crozier, Glenn Hall, Harry Howell, Eddie Johnson, Dick Meisner, and many, many more. It's been an NHL reunion, and I'm sure they're all very impressed with the talent they've seen. Portland's done an outstanding job of hosting the Memorial Cup. Walker in the penalty box for interference at 16.56. And our thanks to the folks at Molson's, Cooper. What a great job they've done in their support of the Memorial Cup Championship. Harry Littler, president of the CAHA Properties. Not only their support, Bernie, but their class. Everything has been done with class. And you talk about the teams like Lethbridge and Verdun, uh, all very cooperative and Boy, they've represented their respective areas just fantastic. Uh, well, you know, the last uh, time Verdun were in the championship was in 1939. They had a couple of guys you'd remember from that team. Rocket Richard, Butch Bouchard, a couple of Hall of Famers. They made good. Final two minutes and 15 seconds of the third period and the game. It's Portland 7, Oshawa 3. Over the line, John Hutchings, and it's clear. It takes a weird oh. bounce off the boards. And Playfair slaps at it, and it goes down the ice. Walker in the penalty box has 55 seconds left in his minor. After it now, this is Todd Huey rolling it in front, and Curran slaps it down the ice. I get the feeling, as we are under two minutes now, the fans here are going to go just they wild. Might, they might not hear us in the last 30 seconds. And I want to tell you something. I'm, I'm uh, impressed with the way Oshawa are finishing the game. They could, well, there's a little bit of high stick and that goes on. But basically, Oshawa are holding their tempers very well. Help wanted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, fellas. We don't need that now. This game is over. Curran, big boy. He belongs to Boston. Oh, Grafazio says, I'll take you on. I don't care how big you are. Because he has a fair size himself. He's, a, he's 195, 6 foot 1. Oh, well, here it comes, the standing ovation. I knew it would just be a moment or two before this erupted again. Well, they had a lot to cheer about. You know, a lot of people in Canada were all dubious of the fact that the Memorial Cup was being played in the United States and the fact that the United States team might finally win the Memorial Cup. But I think it's great for hockey. When I see over 10,000 people here in the Portland Arena, and I see the wonderful job that the uh, Portland team of the management, the coach have done, I think it's just great. Oh, he's throwing him out of the game. Curran's out of the game. But uh, I think it's a tribute to the Portland people, the Portland the management, and the team, and I think it's only right that if, there's, if there is a junior championship in America, the U.S. should belong to it. Well, they've been very supportive of this. DeFazio has been thrown out, too. DeFazio and Curran both thrown out of the game. Well, that's unfortunate, but uh, this late in the game, Curran and DeFazio ejected. 1.43 left to play. You could say one's ejected, the other's dejected. <laughs> that's very appropriate. <laughs> Number seven is Greg Gravel. He's contemplating on playing with the Canadian Olympic team. Number seven of the Oshawa Generals. And we're looking forward to that, of course, in Yugoslavia, the Canadian Olympic team. Next year at the Olympics, and some of the players from the Memorial Cup Championship will no doubt be part of that Canadian team. Now Portland with possession once again, up over the line, a chance for Tim Lorenz, who's out there now, number 22. Tim Lorenz, 16-goal scorer with the Portland Winterhawks during the season. 
Number 22 had the puck clear to the head. Now it's brought out by Grant Sasser. Now forced back. Play fair. Right on top of him is Jeff Steffen. Steffen, number 10. Play fair has it again. He's checked. Passed it over, though, to Kelly Hubbard. Terry Jones, number 7. One minute left to play in the game. There's a break. Three on one now for Portland. Coming up over the line is Walker. Dumps it in front. Intended for Jones, and it just popped over his stick. 45 seconds left to play. Portland winner, Hawks, 7. The Oshawa Generals, 3. After the loose puck, Steve King, number 19. There's a shot. Hit a skate in front as Sorella let that drive go. Steve King, number 19, out there now for Oshawa. Puck is knocked away from him. Todd Huey behind the net. It's hooked off his stick. Comes to Walker. 21 seconds left to play. Inside his own line is Norm Smith. Pass up on the right side. Sorella, he's given a crushing check by Jones. Here's a breakaway. Neely, right in on goal. He scores!
during the tail end of the regular season, your team gave up too many goals. Tonight, you played to perfection defensively. Why? Well, you know, we knew we'd have to come in here and play, uh, play defense because all these teams, you know, are the best best in uh, Canada. And that, so we knew we'd have to come in here and uh, play hard on defense. We've been working hard the defensive practice. That Mr. Hodge has done quite a bit for us, you know, on defense. Now. Sam, thank you very much, and congratulations. Okay, thank you. Our coverage of the 1983 Memorial Cup Championship from Portland will continue in just a moment. Yeah. A commitment to quality. Bridgestone steel-belted radials with exclusive super filler and unique rubber compounds. Woven steel cords, computer researched, systematically x-rayed for quality. Incredibly, Bridgestone's daily test mileage is equal to four times around the earth. A commitment to quality. A superior radial tire, Bridgestone. here at the Memorial Coliseum. The Portland Winterhawks victorious over the Oshawa Generals by a score of 8 to 3. Ladies and gentlemen, now the official presentation. The official presentations as center ice are John Winter, Vice President of Marketing for Bolson's Western Breweries, Mr. Cliff Gable, Executive Vice President of Cooper, Mr. Ed Schnauth, Chairman of the Canadian Major Junior Hockey League, Mr. Ed O'Doherty, Chairman of Junior Hockey for the Canadian American Hockey Association, and Tad LaFontaine. 